another method too, and that is to use cross-polarized filters, which look at the birefringent within a diamond. So natural diamonds and CVD and HPHT both reveal distinctive patterns. Between cross-polarized filters, you can see a birefringent pattern representing the internal strain of the diamond. For CVD, it is a nice columnar pattern, whereas for HVAT, there's no pattern at all. While for natural diamonds, that's what is called an anomalous birefringent pattern. These techniques are fine if one's dealing with loose stones, but when it comes to jewelry with mounted stones, the options are a bit more limited. Returning to our fluorescence instrument, I'll just look at this piece of jewellery of yours, nice pendant. Yeah, I don't know if I'll sell that or if I'll keep it, you know, because although my name's Jill, my surname starts with an S. Yes, well, that is a problem. Okay. Okay, we'll have a look at these. That's the long wave over to the short wave. Always do the long wave first in case something's phosphorescing. And uh, if we compare these, you'll notice that really most of them are all fluorescing brighter in the long wave, except the one that's questionable is up here. It's actually marginally brighter in the short wave. It's also a, a slightly yellowy, greeny color, but we can look at that with another technique in a moment. We can also use this to look at rings. Um, this interesting one of yours with yeah, like green diamonds on the edge. This ring has a blue long wave fluorescence which seems marginally brighter, or quite or noticeably brighter than the short wave fluorescence. However, it's slightly concerning in so far as the long wave one is not your traditional blue you expect from a natural diamond. But we do have another technique for checking such stones, and that is to use spectroscopy. First, we'll look at a loose diamond, one of the ones we looked at earlier. So you're putting the CVD diamond in this toy, what's this called? The spectrometer. Uh, yes, I don't know if it's a CVD diamond, it's a, a diamond, one of those ones. Uh, it's one of the ones which came up as being suspect. And if we look at it under PL, which is to shine it with a, a laser, in this case 405 nanometers, it'll glow. I can probably show you quickly. Ooh. No. Probably can't because it's not very bright at all. Don't um, worry, I have my sunglass lenses. It's always good to be ready for safety matters. And you'll see this has produced a, a very strong peak at 738 nanometers. That's indicative of silicon and vacancies in the crystal. You might remember the description I gave on how CVD is grown. It's in a glass chamber usually, and that has silicon in it. And so some of that contaminates the CVD, but you can get it in nature. So that's not definitive, but you can see two very small peaks here, which if I change the scale, there are two more peaks here. There's one at 678 and one at 542 nanometers, and they are from a nitrogen and nitrogen vacancy center, which is associated with CVD. So the combination of those three peaks means they are CVD. So I was right saying it was CVD. My guess was it was CVD because it wasn't magnetic and it didn't have, what's that thing called? That when Phosphorescence? You, yeah. Yes. So you've got this peak, this peak, this peak, and then you've got this one. Oh, well, you might remember when you came and you said, are they all diamonds? Well, that's what's called a Raman peak and it's specific to diamond and the wavelength of radiation. So it's at 430 nanometers on that, which is diagnostic of diamonds. So all diamonds should show a peak with this system at that wavelength. Okay, we can look at this ring in the same initial um, PL mode, cover it up so we don't get zapped by the laser and turn it on. Now that um, silicon vacancy peak at 737 isn't always there. And here's a CVD on, a ri on the ring, and it shows those two peaks relating to the NV center 
And there's the full 30 again. Yes, that make you happy. So that is also a diamond as well. So you haven't been duped there. They all seem to be diamonds. We can also look at a diamond under absorption and uh, using that same one, which was CVD, you can look at the absorption spectrum and that peak is also a strong absorption at 737 nanometers. So what's absorption? Are you putting a different light through or what are you doing there? This puts bright light across the spectral range of almost in the ultraviolet into the near infrared because 737 is beyond the human vision. So it's handy to have another method like this because the alternative is a spectroscope which you look through and see a spectrum and you can see lines there but it's a bit hard to see ones beyond the range of human visibility. So what's a natural diamond look like? Well in absorption, I grabbed one of those ones we had there, you get a distinctive line over here, that's why you can see a, a peak there. Oh so that's the line you were talking about before? 430? No, no, that's the Raman one. This is in absorption mode and it's at 415, which is uh, due to three nitrogen atoms, which you'll only get as a cluster in a natural diamond. And we can also see it, should be able to see it in PL mode. And that's where you should see the peak you're referring to, but it might be drowned. So I can switch over to that and turn it over to PL mode and we'll see what we've got. Ah, and there's that peak same peak but now it's an emission one at 415 nanometers and, and the one, one I mentioned that's the peak which uh, is tells you it's a diamond although it is superimposed on perhaps another peak that's there. Then what's this one? Oh that's all related to that 415 so that's in fact the blue you see when the diamond's fluorescing. Another spectroscopic technique uses infrared light such spectra shows you details of the nitrogen. There's a region in the spectrum which shows the nitrogen here, along with the standard diamond one and a little hydrogen peak as well. This is a normal diamond, but then if we look at some other ones, for example, this one has a lower amount of nitrogen there, which is in a couple of states, A and B, I won't bore you with those details. But a third type has no nitrogen at all. You can see in this area where the nitrogen is supposed to be, there's no nitrogen. These are type 2 diamonds. So Jack, uh, don't you have like a piece of equipment where you can just press a button and it tells you whether or not it's a natural or a synthetic? Yes, there are numerous systems on the market that are based on either fluorescence and phosphorescence or spectra. The devices are automated versions of basically what I've shown you. Though another po popular technique for low-cost devices is to detect UV transparency. How does it actually work? Well, you see, colour synthetic diamonds are type 2. That means they have no nitrogen in them, just like I showed you with the infrared spectra earlier. And such diamonds, they transmit ultraviolet light. And also, 2%, about 2% of natural diamonds are type 2. So, so these ultraviolet-based instruments are very good as a screening device, but they're not foolproof on account of those... Um, other stones that will also show up as being synthetic, but actually they're not. So you need to do more testing than just rely on screening devices. And um, what about, you said you're gonna do some testing on my pinks or those other colored stones that I collected before? Yes, you can't use these, any of these instruments for color stones on the whole, they're only for colorless. So for those color stones, we have special cases and we'll have to look at that as a separate exercise because we'll also be looking at treatments as well as just how yeah, they grow and cool. could be natural yeah. and treated. Yeah, see. yeah. Um, I've really got to get going. Yeah, okay. but I might want to learn more about it. It's quite interesting, but you know, pretty overwhelming. Well, ride safely. Thanks. See you later.